Section 15.3, Interpreting and Working with Equilibrium Constants. First thing from this section to recognize is that it doesn't matter what you start with. If it's going to go to equilibrium, it'll go to equilibrium either way. So for instance, let's say that you are going from uh, what we were working with before, which is the dinitrogen tetroxide, which is colorless, this big guy here, and you put it in a vessel it's going to start breaking apart. If you just have it and nothing else, it'll start breaking apart into this colorless uh, nitrogen dioxide gas. If it's in a vessel that cannot escape, so all of the product is still there mixed in with the reactants, then as soon as there's enough of these guys, these guys are going to start reacting together and making this. So we're having two things happening at the same time. This, this reactant is going to products, and then as soon as there's enough product made, the products are going to start breaking apart, joining together to make reactant. At the end, you're going to have a certain amount of reactants left and a certain amount of products left, and that's at equilibrium. And it does not matter which way you start. For instance, you could start with all of the little guys, all of the, the nitrogen dioxide. You could start um, just, just with uh, this guy. And, as, and it will break up, it will join together to form some of these. And as soon as you have enough of this, it's going to start breaking apart back into these. And you'll end up with the very same amount. So in these various experiments um, here, you're going to see all of, all of these numbers will give you the same expression, the same equivalent um, constant, the same e equilibrium constant will be reached no matter which, how much you start with, as long as you've got a certain amount, that particular experiment is going to give you a certain amount of products and reactants. So it doesn't matter which direction you start in. The second part in this section that's really important is giving a guess. If you look at an equilibrium constant, can you in an instant tell, am I going to have more products or more reactants? So let's just look at a basic fraction. Okay, if I have... 10 divided by 2. I've got a number bigger than 1. Okay, so remember, if I, have, if I have 10 divided by 10, or 2 divided by 2, okay, these things are going to be equal to each other, and it's the same as a 1. Anytime that you have the same number over itself, you're going to have the number 1. If you've got a number bigger than 1, the way you have a number bigger than 1 is to have the numerator high, the numerator is big, and the denominator is little. If you have a big, a big numerator and a small denominator, you'll have a number bigger than 1. Okay. If you have it the other way, if you were to have a small denominator, or small numerator, and a big denominator, you are not going to have, this, this would be 5, Okay, 5 is greater than 1. Down here, if you have 2 divided by 10, well, 2 divided by 10 is point. Uh, is 0.2. Well, 0.2 is much less than 1. So 0.2 is less than 1. So if you have a big denominator and a little numerator, you're going to have a number smaller than 1. If you have a big numerator and a little denominator, you're going to have a number bigger than 1. So if you have a K that is much bigger than 1, okay, let's say a million or a billion or a zillion, then what does that mean? You're going to have lots of top and very little bottom. Well, what is the top? What are What is the fraction here that's the concentration on the top? Well, the concentration is the concentration of the products raised to the, to the coefficient of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to the coefficient of the reactions times, how, uh, times however many concentrations are in the products or reactants. Well, if you've got a big number here, then if your K is bigger than 1, you're going to have lots of products. Okay, It's a product favored um, at equilibrium. Conversely, if you have a number much less than 1, okay, that, the only way that you can have a number less than 1 is if you have a big denominator and a little tiny numerator, then you're going to have a number bigger than uh, a number less than 1. And that's going to favor the the reactants. So you're going to look at your you're going to look at your K sub C, and if your K sub C say is 
2 times 10 to the 14. Well, you, there's lots of products, very little reactants made. If you have a K sub C that is um, 1 times 10 to the minus 4, well, that's way less than 1. That means you're going to have lots of reactants and very little products. So you can guess, you can make guesses based upon the equilibrium constants. That's why they're really useful to know what you've got. How, what, have you, what have you got in the test tube that you can't see? The other really cool thing in this section is that if you were to go backwards, remember you have forward, re, forward and reverse reactions. If you have a forward reaction, you're going to have a K sub C, okay? Because let's say whatever forward means is you're going to have reactants on the left going to products on the right. Your products are going to be on the top, your reactants are going to be on the bottom, and you're going to get a certain equilibrium constant. If you think of the reaction backwards, so if your products in your mind is, act, is, is your reactants and your reactants is your products because they can go in either way, well, the way that you would do that is that you would flip these two numbers. These two numbers would be flipped. Well, suddenly now you're not going to get the same number. If you divide top divided by bottom, unless they're a 1, if, if it's a, something over itself, then it's going to be the same. Any other difference, you're going to have the reciprocal. So, for instance, whatever your K sub C is, K sub C in the forward direction, okay, I'll say this forward, is going to equal um, 1 over k sub c in the reverse. These are, these are reciprocals. So if you were to take, if you were to find the forward, here's the forward reaction here, and I have the k sub c at 0 0.212, well, what is my k sub c going back? I don't even have to do anything. I just have to put 0.212 in the calculator, push the 1 over x button, which is your reciprocal button. Suddenly now, here is your new k sub c going back. So k sub c's forward and backwards are reciprocals of each other. So k sub c, forward and reverse, are reciprocals of each other. Another manipulation that you can do is you can multiply both sides by a number. So for instance, if I have this stuff going to two of these, and here's my K sub C, 0.212, and I multiply both by two. So I multiply the front by two, I multiply the back by two, okay? So I can, as long as I multiply the same on both sides, I can do that, but I've multiplied it by two. By multiplying this by two, what you're going to end up with is 4 over 2, which is something squared. So if you multiply, if you multiply by a number, okay, whatever that number is, by 2, by 3, by 6, whatever, your k sub c will be raised to that power. All right, so whatever your k sub c is, if your k sub c is 0.212, and I double the reaction, I take the 0.212 and raise it to that 2, that doubling, and then that is going to be the, the next one. So it's 2.2 to the second power. If you triple it, you would take the K sub C and raise it to the third power. If you would, whatever it's to that, whatever that power is. Very, very useful here. The last one would be um, a really bad slide here. There's no example. But if you do two, if you do something in two steps, if you remember the... Um, the process that we worked out where where it may happen in two steps and you have to actually have two balanced equations if you were to find the k sub c of the first so let's say something happens in two steps step one step two okay there's going to be a step a k sub c of the first step whatever that is there's going to be a k sub c of the second step whatever that whatever that is the total amount when you when you add those steps together are going to be the product of the k sub c for the first sub step and the k sub c to the second step. You simply multiply the two uh, equilibrium constants together, and that will be the equi equilibrium cons uh, constant for the combination of the two. Remember, this is Hess's law. Hess's law um, saying that you can you can do a chemical reaction in as many steps as possible. You simply have to add the information from each step up, and that's what you're doing. You're taking the, the, con the equilibrium constant from each, multiplying it together, and then you've got the equilibrium constant uh, for the final.